got a chance to see the remake of Salem's Lot by Stephen King. Let's talk about it right now. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Thank you so much for spending time with me as we rant about movies, comic books, and television shows. I am your host, Frank Zenka. I'm an award-winning screenwriter, novelist, and comic book writer, as well as a filmmaker. And if we're going to talk about comics, I have my vampire mob set in 1950s Hollywood called Lords of L.A. It's issue 1 and issue 2. So issue 2 uh, is just coming out now. I have the print run going in. And yeah, it's got Marilyn Monroe in it, and we got vampire and vampire action, and we got Were Panthers, whole bunch of stuff going on. So it's basically like True Blood meets uh, The Godfather. So if you want one, let me know. Just uh, type in the uh, in the comments section, and we'll uh, we'll get together. And uh, I do sign them and that kind of thing as well. All right. Plus on Kickstarter, just in time for October Halloween. We have a Mythlords Classic Monsters card game. Good for the whole family. And it plays one to four players. You can actually play it by yourself as well. And we're going to be unlocking the fifth player as well, the Wicked Witch, because I also have an uh, expansion for Wizard of Oz as well. And it comes with little figures and things to that effect as well, like here is Frankenstein. Uh, but yeah, check out the either MythLords.net or go to the description in the uh, link and there will be, go to the link in the description below. I get that backwards sometimes. <laughs> and you can go right to the page and uh, you can pledge for it. And I think we're at like 12.5. So we're funded, uh, but I'd like to unlock that stretch goal at like 15K. All right, so let's jump into Salem's Lot. So the original Salem's Lot uh, so it was a book by Stephen King to begin with. And, you know, back in the day, Stephen King did a lot. And he was like the hot writer, man. If you ha if you hadn't read anything by Stephen King, uh, you weren't in the cool group. <laughs> you know, so of course he was he did It and Pet Cemetery and all this stuff as well. It's uh, Christine, Cujo. I mean, there was just Thinner. It was just a pile of books by him that was just, he was just racking them out. And uh, there was a lot of them that became, you know, TV movies uh, or actual feature films. Carrie, I mean, it was just a pile of them. So Salem's Lot was a made for TV series. So it was a limited series. Back in the day, you would have like, uh, they would adapt books. And they would be like maybe three or four episodes, and that was it. And that's what this one was like. I think it was a, a, a series. Which is the difference between that and this one. But when I was a kid, man, I think, it was, I think I was like nine or something like that when this came out on television. And I was watching this thing, and you hear, din, 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 and I'm like, din, din. and then you have the smoke outside the window. And, you know, I watched it again and it was cheesy, but back then it was like, and then you had, uh, I think it was Danny Glickman, uh, on the window with the nails on the window, let me in, let me in. <laughs> and I was, I had, that was a, one of the only times, because I, I watch horror all the time. That was the only times I actually had nightmares over that with, you know, some kid out the window with glowing eyes friggin' scratching on my window. <laughs> so I was very interested to see what they did with this one. Uh, I think I saw it on uh, Max. It's on Max. So this one is written and directed by the same person, and you know how I feel about that. Uh, it's, it doesn't give other points of view. When you're writer or director, it takes a very specific kind of person to be able to pull that off. So it was written and directed by Gary Dauberman, who also wrote It, uh, among other things. He, uh, he's, he's done a lot of little horror type uh, stuff. He's an okay writer. I wouldn't say he's great. He did The Nun. Uh, he did Annabelle Comes Home. Annabelle Comes Home was decent. 
it was the first part of it was was good i thought the nun uh and the nun 2 yeah i did reviews on those and i'm not a big fan of either i love the character i love the setup it just it just doesn't pay off and that's how i kind of how i felt here uh because the cast i think is generally good because they could have really made this cheesy and at parts and times it is cheesy but I thought that the cast, for the most part, really tried to sell it. The look of the vampires, I thought, were pretty decent. And this was starred Lewis Pullman. And he's been in a few things. Like, he was just in um, Hot Gun, uh, Hot Gun, Top Gun Maverick. Uh, and uh, just a couple other things. So he's, you know, he's, he's a pretty decent actor. I thought he was, he did a decent job, I thought. So he also did Bad Times at the El Royale and Outer Range. Uh, so yeah, he's done a few things. And he did the Pray for Night, the Strangers one with uh, Christina Hendrick. So I mean, he's, he's a good actor. There's no doubt. And I got to say that the kid uh, from Miss Marvel, uh, Jordan Preston Carter, who played Mark, he was great. He was great. And then Mackenzie Lay, who I'm not sure if she is... British, but she's done some British work, so I assume that she's British, but you couldn't tell in this. I thought she was really good, and she looked really good as a vampire as well. And Alfre Woodward, you know, she's always good. And then um, Danny, the guy who played Danny Glick, I thought was really good too. Bill Camp is also in it. So it had, I thought that the acting was generally good. So I can't fault that, but at the same time, it felt very rushed because you were taking a probably a 400-something page book, and trying to squeeze it into two hours. There was no real development of the shop owner. And the original shop owner, oh my God, he was played by a very famous actor back in the day. I forgot his name. We really got to know the shop owner, the one that was setting up everything uh, for Bothard uh, Barlow. Uh, I, again, I don't think we got the setup that was really required for the payoff so we start out with a little bit of knowledge with uh, the guy coming back to town he's a writer uh, Ben Mears so we we got to meet him and then we meet Susan at the same time which is Mackenzie Lay's character and then from there you know all hell's already starting to break loose it, it slows down for just like 15 minutes and then we we get into the vampire stuff like literally right away because we don't have time for anything. And then the whole last 20 minutes is all action. And I thought they did a good a good job with the 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 fact that it was a period piece because they left it in the 60s early 70s. And then on top of that, they had all the old cars and they had a drive-in. So they literally had a drive-in uh, parking lot full of old cars. I don't know what that cost. I don't know what the, the actual budget was, but just for them keeping it at a period piece and having that many vehicles, it, it was not cheap. You know, it was, it was obviously a multi, multi-million dollar thing. For all I know, it might have been upwards of 30, 40, even 50 million dollars. I don't know. Um, but it was some, there was some good blood stuff in there. There's, you know, vampires are very strong, uh, and there's, you know, he's always, like, warding them off with, like, an arm where they can't bite him, and I'm like, yeah, no, <laughs> no, uh, you know, there was one, we're in scene where they got thrown across the room, things like that, so, is it worth watching? If you like vampire stuff, yeah, just in time for Halloween, I would, I would say it's worth the watch, uh, but it does, it does feel really rushed. It doesn't feel like there's a really good payoff because you don't really get to know the characters very well. And and I, and I don't I really fault the writer too much for that because he was obviously constrained. But uh, but yeah, so I overall, I thought it was okay. It's okay. It's not bad. It's just, and it gets cheesy at times. But it's not an awful movie at, by any sense. So it's probably more middle of the road, 5.5, something like that. I'm probably not going to be watching this thing again. And, you know, the first one was cheesy too. So, 
if you have vampires in a small town, uh, it's always going to be kind of cheesy. <laughs> Especially when you don't keep some of it at night and a lot of it is in daytime. The best time, thing for the vampires is when it works at night. Uh, and action vampire stuff kind of works, but that's not what, you know, like Underworld and stuff like that. Not, that's not what this is. So, yeah, so it's, you know, even Lost Boys is cheesy. But with that one, it's more of a tongue-in-cheek type of film than this is. This one, I think, I don't know if it really tries to be tongue-in-cheek. I think it tries to be chilling uh, at times, but... <laughs> but a lot of times it misses the mark, I think. So, no pun intended. Mark. <laughs> Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have you seen it? Are you going to see it? And if you have, let me know what you guys thought. Did you guys hate it? Did you guys think it was great? I can't anybody say it was great. <laughs> the only thing I would think of people think it was, I, I, I gave it too high a mark. That's what I think. All right. Uh, thank you guys uh, so much for watching all the way through. Remember to give me that like. Give me that subscribe if you can. And remember too that if you want to, Get in with Myth Lords Classic Monsters card game. The artwork by itself is amazing by Mark Spears. There's a lot of cover art for Marvel and DC. And you can play as your favorite classic monster. And uh, yeah, it has Dracula, Frankenstein, Preach from the Deep, Wolfman, The Bride, Mr. Hyde, and yes, that rhymes, and uh, Hotless Horseman, and you're fighting over locations and stuff like that. So really cool stuff. And uh, you are going to unlock the... Uh, the witch character here shortly. There's like the figure for the witch, and here's the figure for Dracula and stuff like that. Cool stuff. All right, so just go to mythlords.net or click the description below for the link. I said it backwards again. <laughs> All right, check out some of my other videos. I just did a review on Smile 2, so check that one out as well, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. All right, bye-bye.